at blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show. While you're at it, you can take the time out to interact with us during the course of this episode. Hit us up on Twitter at infinity one Prod. And for news you can use, go check out our Facebook page over at Infinity One Productions, where we dip into a little bit of everything on there. Hope you all had a fantastic weekend and the work week is going good for you so far. We are going to have a jam-packed episode for you all tonight. We're going to be covering the fallout from WWE Raw, but we're going to do it in a twist. We're going to do it in a way where we're just going to highlight key points, as we do have a very special exclusive YouTube episode of the RCWR show that's available right after WWE Raw. You want to make sure you check that out. If you haven't subscribed to us in YouTube, uh, make sure you do so. You can hit us up on there at the RCWR Show. So the conversation, if you will, is a little bit of a continuation from what happened on YouTube on tonight. So we're doing a continuation of that. And if you happen to have read the episode description of tonight's episode, you also know we're going to be talking a little bit about football But first, let's go on ahead and let's get WWE Raw out the way. Now, just to pick up from where we left off on Monday night, and it's 24 hours now since we had got Raw, and I honestly, I don't know about you guys, I still feel the same way I did last night after watching Raw, which was, man, this episode just feels a little bit lackluster. I mean, the main emphasis was just put on CM Punk and The Rock getting into one last exchange verbally before they have their first encounter at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view for that respected WWE title this Sunday. Of course, The Rock delivering a great Rock promo just was the usual verbiage, same verbiage that he had spit out last week, really didn't say anything new But I love the touch of the Shields, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, just coming out of nowhere and really showing that they fear no man, no matter what accomplishments he may have, as they lay up to smack it down on the Rock's candy ass, softening him up real good for CM Punk this Sunday. Now, of course, we would see the WWE chairman, Vince McMahon, bump into CM Punk and Paul Heyman right before the night was out, putting down a match stipulation that's now been added to his match against The Rock this Sunday. And that stipulation is, should The Shield try to interfere in his match, then Vince McMahon will have no choice but to strip him of the WWE title. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear that, first thing that comes into my mind is, well, so much for the Shield, but there is still a few other curveballs that could come about with this particular match. Now, I don't want to just throw it all out there right now. I want to try to save some of that for our Call That Match special this Saturday, where I'm going to be offering match predictions for Sunday's Royal Rumble pay-per-view. But really, they're going to need some true shock value when it comes to this pay-per-view. As on paper, when you look at what we have, it's not really much, as really all the marbles is on that CM Punk rock match. And some would question whether or not that match alone is going to be enough to really bring in the buy rates. You think about the Royal Rumbles from previous years, which on card delivered. When it came time for the actual event, delivered two times of that that was on paper. But for this one, this one is just really looking kind of, eh. and notice For those of you that have watched Raw from this past Monday, notice how they really didn't put that much emphasis on what matches we were going to be seeing. I mean, thank God for Wikipedia, folks, because when Raw went off the air, I'm kicking back. I'm like, okay, so other than The Rock and CM Punk, uh, remind me again, 
who all we're going to be seeing, what matches are going to be taking place at the Royal Rumble. I completely forgot, as there was really no hype. Where was the five, ten minutes of Raw dedicated to hyping up the pay-per-view? Poorly executed job WWE did in trying to make those fans want to hit that order button for the pay-per-view, that just really says to me they have a lot of faith in Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and I just really hope, I'm hoping here, I don't usually say this, I've been a fan of The Rock for many years, I've liked most of his movies that he's done, with the exception of The Two Fairy, I made sure I dodged the hell out of that one, um, you, I may watch it when I have my own kid, but other than that, I, I refuse to watch that movie, uh, Sorry, you know, it's just not happening. But, you know, I would hope that this pay-per-view is is really going to deliver. And for those of you that are kind of scratching your heads right now saying, yeah, Lee, what matches are we going to be seeing at that Royal Rumble pay-per-view? Well, we got the latest card for that, and it goes as follows. Now, this match was just announced, I believe, about maybe an hour and a half ago, two hours ago. Our YouTube pre-show that we're going to be getting, we'll see Antonio De Cesaro defending his United States Championship against The Miz. I don't know about you all, a little bit disappointed that this did not make it to the actual pay-per-view, but hey, great YouTube pre-show nonetheless. Really, I'm going to be there. I thought originally the route that they were possibly going to go was maybe Caitlyn defending her Divas title. I, I think this is the smarter way to go. Since it's going to happen on a YouTube pre-show, I would still expect for these two guys to deliver a four-star quality type of match. But again, United States Championship will be on the line on the YouTube pre-show. Antonio Cesaro will be defending against The Miz. Of course, we have that 30-man Royal Rumble match where we have 23 participants that have already been named Seven slots remain open. Now, so far, we know that some of the participants include John Cena, Ryback, Sheamus, Randy Orton, Miz. Miz doing a little double duty there. Antonio Cesaro doing a little double duty as well. Eve Slater, Jinder Mahal, Kane, Daniel Bryan, Kofi Kingston, Brodus Clay, Great Khali, Jimmy and Jay Uso, Darren Young, Titus O'Neil, Michael McGillicuddy, Cody Rhodes, Drew McIntyre, Wade Barrett, Damian Sandow, and of course we have Dolph Ziggler, who had won the Beat the Clock Challenge from Raw this past Monday. And as a result of that, he's been put in a very bad spot by acting supervising manager Vicky Guerrero as he has to choose between entering at number one or number two. Dolph Ziggler. Really going to have his work cut out for him. And again, we have seven slots that are open. No doubt these will probably go to superstars that we have not seen in a good long period of time. Um, You know, I'm thinking of a few names of folks that we could possibly be seeing that could be making their return. Um, Wouldn't surprise me if maybe Tommy Dreamer might do a little something. Of course, we've heard the rumblings there that MVP could possibly be making a comeback. Now, he's been shooting it down all week. He has even been doing a little bit of damage control tonight, saying that there's no way he's going to be at the Royal Rumble due to prior commitments, the way that his wrestling contract is set up, I believe, with New Japan Pro Wrestling, saying that there's just no way he's going to be able to do this. I beg to differ. I wouldn't be too surprised if we might end up seeing MVP. Of course, another name that we have floating around into the mix is Boogeyman, uh, Sergeant Slaughter, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, Gene Snitsky. Uh, A lot of rumblings there of uh, folks that could possibly be filling up those seven spots. Of course, we could possibly... Um, have uh, the return of, hey, The Rock, you never know. There's a lot of stuff that could happen with this pay-per-view. But if I were to give an early prediction right now, just based on some of the events that we had saw from Raw over the course of weeks, you know, it really wouldn't surprise me at this point 
if John Cena might be the one to win this year's Royal Rumble, and that might upset a lot of fans. But it would not surprise me, nonetheless, if that's the route that they may go. Now, I'm not sitting up saying that's my prediction. My pick could change from that, but there is a lot that I've been seeing over the past couple of weeks that would kind of suggest that it could be Cena that's going to win the whole thing. I'll have the final verdict this Saturday, but just looking at what we're seeing right now, that's kind of the suggestions that I'm kind of going. I'm actually going to be sitting down later this week, and I'm actually going to be looking at all the guys on this uh, list here of World Rumble participants, and I'll officially have my mind made up on Saturday who's the best route to go. But, you know, regardless of how things are going to play out, hands down, this is going to be a Royal Rumble pay-per-view that should, if properly executed, have a lot of fans walking away, smiling. I would expect there's going to be some serious shenanigans going down between that Rock versus CM Punk match. I'm also looking at that Royal Rumble match. I think we're going to be in for a real special treat right there. But, uh, you know, one of the other things that I want to talk about, and we got to show some love to this guy. Of course, we got to bring up superstar Billy Graham, one of my favorite guys. Now, it looks like he had a little bit of a scare over the weekend as he was hospitalized due to a double pneumonia. Now, it said that he's getting better, he's getting stronger and uh, that there's no longer uh, is he using continuous uh, oxygen, and it looks like more likely he's uh, being taken off of antibiotics, uh, stuff that's basically helping remove the fluid that's around his chest cavity, and it looks like it said that he's going to be released from the hospital and sent home sometime soon this week, but he's going to remain on oral medications in order to rest. If you'd like to send him your uh, speedy recoveries, you can do so. He's pretty active on Facebook, so just look him up on there. Um, Of course, we had saw from Raw this past Monday night that the hardcore legend Mick Foley, he's also going to be taking part in that WWE Hall of Fame induction, but newly announced is the two-time WWF champion, Mr. Bob Backlund, I actually had totally forgot that this man was not even in the WWE Hall of Fame. I actually was under the impression he had got put in it a couple of years back. I was a little bit stunned to see that he's just now getting his just due. And, man, when I first heard this news, I mean, like many of you probably that are old school wrestling fans, you know, I grew up on Bob Backlund. So for me to see him finally get this acknowledgement, it's like, man, it's about damn time. Very excited for the man. You know, other than Bruno San Martino, Bob Backlund there, he was damn impressive with that long reign that he had as a WWF champion. What was that reign, like six years or something like that? I mean, the guy was just an unstoppable juggernaut there. I think it's going to be a really, really great moment when we get this Hall of Fame induction. Of course, we're still hearing the rumblings there that Triple H and crew, they are trying their damnedest to try to see if they can get some type of a deal with Bruno San Martino to try to have him be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And quite honestly, if they're not able to make this moment happen, and probably one of the best states to do wrestling in front of, then they may never get another opportunity like this again. And, uh, you know, if you're a Bruno San Martino fan, keep your fingers crossed. Maybe something can happen with this. Uh, Otherwise, you know, the route that they could take is just induct the man anyway and just have somebody accept the award on his behalf i don't you know i don't understand why not just go that route but hey that's just me that's just my two cents uh on that but can't wait to see mr bob Backlund get his proper justice there of course we're also hearing the rumblings that dx might be inducted into the hall of fame that or the click now if it's going to be the click y'all know which 
that consists of, that's Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, uh, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, uh, Sean Waltman. There's a lot of different ways that this could play out. I don't know what you guys would be more inclined to see, DX or to click. Um, I would go the... uh, I would actually have to go the DX route. I'm sorry. And you know what? If you're going to go the DX route, man, talk about having a set of balls. Wouldn't it be badass to see WWE give a invitation to the knife wonder of the world, China, to come be a part of the induction ceremony? I know that is a huge long shot, guys. And I know we got some China fans out there. Um, it's a long shot, but man, you would think it would it would happen if they're going to go the DX route. But uh, if there's any indication from what we've seen over the past special episodes of Raw that they've done, where they've done these DX reunions, I don't think that China is going to be coming back to that organization anytime soon. There's just too much drama with that. You guys out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have that one ex that no matter what, you try your damnedest to get on with your life. You're moving on, and she, you know, just wants to be friends, and you're trying to be friends with her, but she still wants to get a piece of that <clears throat> strudel. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just don't see that happening. I, I think that would just put a lot of people, especially Stephanie McMahon, in a pretty bad spot that she really just does not want to be in. Um, You know, I want to talk about something serious for a little bit, and I want to just switch gears a little bit. And I think you guys will appreciate this uh, in-depth discussion that we're getting ready to go into here. And, uh, again, you're listening to the RCWR Show, Tuesday Night Edition. I'm your host, Black Avenger, a.k.a. Black Azrael Lee Sanders. Um, I want to talk about the Super Bowl, okay? We see that we have Baltimore Ravens. They're going to be meeting the San Francisco 49ers in two weeks. It's going to be all out there for that Lombardi Trophy, and you know how it is when it's Super Bowl time. It's all about the commercials for a lot of people. It's that one time of year where they got to call up all their buddies, and they want to just have everybody come over their house. They're going to have pizza. They're going to have wings. They're going to have a shitload of beer. It's going to be some good times, relayed back, a lot of fun, watching those cool commercials, have everybody talking at the water cooler at work. Monday morning or at the microwave where y'all are heating up your lunches. You know how it all is for you guys. But, you know, I want to talk about something pretty serious here, and it was something that was what I thought was a little bit alarming when I had saw this. Now, as always, we're kicking back. We're interacting with you guys on Twitter, Facebook, wherever. And uh, we saw that there was a small number of you all that was – very heated and very passionate about seeing the Ravens and the 49ers be the two teams to go head-to-head in the Super Bowl. While the media kept hyping up that it's going to be two brothers that's going to be taking their teams respectively to the Super Bowl, two brothers that's going to be going head-to-head, something that we're probably never, ever going to see again in NFL history two brothers on coaching two teams going head to head. I mean, that's just, you know, what are the odds of that happening? It's like winning the lottery almost. But we saw a core of you guys be very passionate about two specific players that are going to be going into this year's Super Bowl. Of course, Ray Lewis and Michael Crabtree. Now, we had saw a series of tweets from one individual that came off to be a little bit disturbing is the best way that we can describe it. And his comments that he posted on Twitter, it was alarming to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if his account had got suspended or if maybe he might have actually did some type of physical harm to somebody because – And I wish we were making this stuff up, but you can't. We saw that this guy had 
put up like a series of tweets all in the span of about three hours bashing fans that were rooting the Ravens, bashing fans that were rooting for the San Francisco 49ers, just going on a unfollow streak left and right, blocking people, talking trash. And this is just some of the tweets that I want to read to you all to really give you insight into this person's mentality. And I want to stress to you all that in no shape or form, the words that I'm getting ready to say, it is not a representation of myself. It's not a representation of Infinity One Productions. Uh, it's not a representation of uh, anyone associated uh, with Infinity One Productions or the RCWR Show, Impact Showdown Radio. These are the opinions of one specific user on Twitter. I'm not going to even give his name because he does not deserve that type of press. All right, so it goes as follows. And again, you can't make this stuff up. All right, here we go. And direct quotes right here. As Sports Illustrated, Peter King. Hey, Peter King, I hope you die, you fat fucking piece of shit. Still, President, all ESPN is going to do is blow Ray Lewis up about his inspiration on Martin Luther King Day, even though he's a fucking murderer. If the Ravens' plane crashed, it would be a good thing. This is another tweet that he sent to another user. City of drunken murderers, perfect fit for Ray Lewis. He will so be shaking six to eight people next week. Keep supporting and celebrating a fucking murderer, you scumbags. I hope you all get shanked to death by Ray Lewis. Seriously, I wish it on you. At Matthew Barry, TMR, at Ray Rice 27, you support a murderer, you fucking losers. This season is the season of criminals. Crabtree raped a bitch. Ray Lewis murdered someone. I guess selling your soul to Satan works. Murderer on the Ravens, and you fucking losers love him. Yet you all crucify Lance Armstrong. You are that fucking stupid? Yes, you all are. And that is just a snippet of what I am going to read to you guys about that particular individual that had said what he said. Now, I'm one of those type of people, I am one of those type of guys, I always pose this question out there to folks. You're either going to be a leader, you're either going to be a follower, or you're going to be an individual. Now, if you're a follower, you're one of those type of people, you want to be in the know-it-all, you want to know what's going down, you want to try to look kind of hip, you want to know what's current. You want to be on the ins and the outs, so you're going to leech yourself on to somebody so that you're always in the loop. You're going to try to follow somebody. Hey, that's how Twitter works, right? You're following people. Now, if you're a leader, you want to set an example for everybody to follow. If you're an individual, then you're one of those type of people. You're not a leader, you're not a follower, you're just somebody that just wants to do your own thing, right or wrong, hey, it's on your head, but you're doing it on your own, that's it. You know, and the question that I always put out there to somebody, are you a follower, a leader, or individual? Which path are you walking? When I had heard these things that this person had said, the first thing that clicked in my head was, okay. What the hell is this person really talking about, and does this person really have any type of merit? Is there any merit to what this person is actually saying? So I vaguely had remembered what had went down with Ray Lewis back in early 2000, but I had to take a refresher memory course, if you will. Now, for those of you that are kind of like, ah, what, what did happen there? Yeah, I remember hearing a little something, but kind of slipped my mind. I got you covered, baby. I got you covered. All right. Now, just to rewind it back, following a Super Bowl party, I believe it was Super Bowl 34 in 2000, 
Ray Lewis was down in Atlanta with some companions, one Reginald Oakley and Joseph Sweeting. Now, they bumped into a group of guys, and a fight had broke out between these two groups. And the end result was the deaths of Jackie Baker and Richard Lower. Now, Lewis, Oakley, Sweeting, they were questioned by the Atlanta police days later, and the men were indicted on murder and aggravated assault charges. Now, the suit which Ray Lewis wore that night of the stabbings, which was described as a white suit, to this very day, folks, has not been found. Now, it was speculated that Lewis may have dumped that suit in a garbage bin outside of a fast food restaurant. A plea deal was negotiated for Lewis by his lawyer, seeing that the murder charges be dropped in exchange for Lewis's testimony against Oakley and Sweeting, and that he pleads guilty to a misdemeanor charge for obstruction of justice, of which he did claim he gave misleading statements to the police the morning after the killings. Now, Lewis was sentenced to 12 months probation, which is the maximum for a first-time offender. The NFL fined him $250,000. Now, a fine at the time, which probably still hasn't been surpassed to this day, was considered to be the most highest an NFL player has received for non-drug-related issues. Now, for those of you that are a little bit curious with regards to Oakley and Sweeting, they eventually were acquitted of the charges in June 2000 on the basis that they acted in self-defense. To this day, no other suspects has ever been arrested for the crime. Now, I want you guys to know that in 2004, Ray Lewis had reached a settlement with a four-year-old India Lowler, born four months after the death of her father Richard, preempting a scheduled civil proceedings. Lewis also reached an undisclosed settlement with the Baker's family. Now, pretty much for his entire football career, definitely after these events has happened, Ray Lewis has been heavily involved in charitable activities, and it all started with the Ray Lewis 52 Foundation, which is a nonprofit corporation whose mission is to provide personal and economic assistance to disadvantaged youth. This foundation, folks, has funded such events as adopting 10 families in the Baltimore City community for the holidays, an annual celebrity auction and bowling tournament, the Great Maryland Duck Derby, Thanksgiving food drives on North Avenue in Baltimore, and Ray's Summer Days. All proceeds have helped fund the Ray Lewis Foundation. Now, James Brown, you all know that name very well, CBS broadcaster. He actually had presented Ray Lewis with an award in 2006. It was called the Act of Kindness Award for all his hard work that he's done in the community. And, folks, just to give you that real overall perspective of how much an impact Ray Lewis has made in Baltimore, Maryland, May 11, 2010, a portion of Baltimore's North Avenue was renamed Ray Lewis Way in honor of the linebacker and his charitable work. Not to mention, let's look at the man's career. I mean, this guy was defensive player twice in 2000 and 2003, Super Bowl MVP in 2000, 13-time pro bowler, seven-time AP, first team, all-pro player, and was also a two-time All-American in college back in 1994 and 1995. Now, you know, Paul's right there. When I hear about that shaky incident that happened, and I just hear all these things of positive things, positive energy, good things that has come out from this man. 
I can't help but think of a actor, and it is a actor that I've had a lot of respect, that I've had a lot of admiration for for a good number of years. He's one of my favorite African American uh, actors, and his name is Charles S. Dutton. Now, those of you, you may not know the name, but if you grew up in the 80s, uh, the 90s, you will remember that he had that hit TV show on Fox called Rock, which was basically a sitcom about a garbage collector named Rock Emerson, uh, who had his wife and he had his dad living with him. He also had his deadbeat brother that lived with him that was always in between jobs, but his first passion was being a saxophone player. He wanted to play jazz music. It was a really great series. It ran from 1991 to 1994. Uh, He also had did Menace to Society in 1993. All of you should remember that movie. If you don't, go Netflix, hit That's Your Best Friend. Uh, He also had portrayed um, the... um, the chief uh, in the DC Sniper uh, movie there. It was a made-for-TV movie. It was called DC Sniper, 23 Days of Fear, of course, chronicling the Beltway Sniper attacks in 2002. Charles S. Dutton, he had played uh, Chief Charles Moose. You all should remember that one. It was a pretty good uh, made-for-TV movie. He also had participated in Spike Lee's 1996 movie, Get On the Bus, about a bunch of African-American men who were taking a cross-country bus trip to Washington, D.C. in order to participate in the Million Man March. I bring all this up for a reason, and it's something that a lot of people quickly forget about or don't even know. You know, when Charles S. Dutton was a very young man, more specifically when he was 17 years old, he had got into a fight with somebody. And uh, this ended in a way where the man that he had fought died. And as a result of that, Dutton was charged and convicted of manslaughter, and he spent two years in prison. Now, several months after being released from prison, Charles S. Dutton was arrested for possession of a deadly weapon, and from there he was sentenced to three years in prison. Now, it was in prison that he finally had found his passion to want to straighten up his life and do better for himself. Now, It was there that he decided that he wanted to go back to school, get his GED, and he was able to accomplish that. Eventually, he went to complete a two-year college uh, course program at Hagerstown Junior College in Hagerstown, Maryland. And upon his release, he enrolled in drama at Townsend State University, suburb just outside of Townsend, Maryland. And at this time... Dutton has earned a master's degree in acting from the Yale School of Drama. You know, I can remember early on in the interviews that Dutton used to give how when people have found out about his checkered past, they kind of really didn't want to take a gamble with him because they didn't like the fact that, oh, man, this guy, he kind of killed somebody. So he had to prove himself all over again, that he could be trusted, that he was worthy. You know, we live in a society, and I always point this out to a lot of people, that, you know, the media, they can either make your career or they can break you. The media has also been the type that they can be very forgiving. And, you know, when I think of everything that had happened with Charles S. Dutton, and I, you know, I can't help but compare that to Ray Lewis and say, you know, here are two guys who had made a very critical mistake early on in their lives, and they have been trying to live the right path since. And you know what? We all aren't perfect. Those of you that are listening, myself included, we all have made mistakes that we aren't proud of. 
We have to live with it. The only thing we can do is learn from it and try to do better. And, you know, my whole thing is, you know, when it comes to Ray Lewis, I think when you look at his career, is there a smudge? Yes, without a doubt, there is a smudge in his career, that incident alone. But I think when it's all said and done, I think that all the good that he's been able to accomplish for the sport of football, everything that he's been able to do outside of football with his charity work, I think all of that will overshadow that one blemish in his life. Same way with Charles S. Dutton. Now, with regards to Michael Crabtree, you know, we really don't even need to go all in-depth as we did uh, with Ray Lewis right there. Michael Crabtree, in a nutshell, that's an entirely different story, one of which has actually had a lot of positive reactions uh, from a lot of fans, as a lot of folks feel that this man is just a victim of somebody that is trying to get paid. And, uh, you know, we should point out to you guys that Michael Crabtree, in case you missed it, he was accused of raping uh, a woman uh, in a hotel room after his team had uh, scored their playoff victory over the Green Bay Packers last weekend. Now, we should point out to you that Michael Crabtree, he voluntarily had met with the police and their investigation into this, talked with them for about two hours. Now, his attorney, Joshua Bentley, he had this to say in a very brief uh, statement that was emailed out to the Associated Press. Direct quote right here, Michael fully cooperated with the inspectors and will continue to do so throughout this investigation. Now, we have the latest update for you guys with regards to that. Uh, In case you guys don't watch ESPN, it is looking as though uh, with regards to this possibly going to trial, that charges could be happening, doesn't look like that is going to be the case. Now, this had first broke out over the weekend on ESPN. And uh, the way that it's looking right now, and this is from a well-respected source by ESPN, it looks as though the charges uh, in the events that led to this investigation um, looks like it's going to be squashed as a second female witness had backed up Crabtree's version of the events to police, according to this source. And there's basically a feeling in the 49ers organization that the events will not develop into anything more than what's already been put out there. That combined with the fact that Crabtree has cooperated with the police, he sat in with them for two hours, gave them all the necessary information that they needed, this one is definitely going to be in the books. And some of the people that have commented uh, on this You know, the main theme that everybody is saying from this, and and it's not just San Francisco 49ers fans, it's fans from all around the world. They're basically saying, okay, leave this guy alone. Okay, here's what happens when you take a young, successful black athlete that's bringing in a boatload of money, looks like he's doing some good. You unfortunately mix him in with the wrong type of people, and this is what happens. So, you know, my message to those of you that want to continue to shit on the Ray Lewis, you want to shit on the Michael Crabtree, and you conveniently want to make it be a race thing, and you want to sit up and say that, oh, you know, hey, we got two African-American guys that are rapists and murderers, and you just want to go all out there with the extreme. The first thing I want you to do, before you make yourself possibly look like an idiot, a fool, I want you guys to do your research and make sure that you know all the facts before you put yourself in a pretty bad spot where you don't look like you know what you're talking about. Once you've done your own research, okay, if you still feel that guys like Ray Lewis, Michael Crabtree aren't your cup of tea, 
If you feel as though you still can't stand these guys, you can't stand the sight of them, you don't like their teams, whatever like that, I got some pretty awesome advice for you guys. You know, we got Super Bowl coming in two weeks. You know where everybody is going to be. Everybody's going to have their cell phones out. Everybody's going to be tweeting. Everybody's going to be on Facebook. Everybody's going to be on Instagram. Everybody is going to be calling each other. Everybody is going to be hooking up. It's going to be all about football. If you don't want to hear any of that jazz, okay, best advice I can give you, power your phone off. Don't go on the Twitter. Don't go on the Instagram. Don't go on the Facebook don't even go on YouTube. You might not even be safe on that, okay? Make it a Netflix night. Go catch up on American Idol, uh, uh, 30 Rock. Go catch up on your favorite TV shows. And then when the newspaper comes out the next day, dodge it because you know every single section is going to be talking about the Super Bowl. And we already know you don't like the Ravens, you don't like the 49ers because – they have those two guys that you don't like on those teams, right? Okay, so dodge the papers, all right? Maybe you might be able to dodge the water cooler talk about the games, if you're lucky. But do what you got to do to dodge all that if you can't stand these two guys after I just presented to you all this evidence. Now, for some of you that's listening, you may kind of get the impression, well, Lee, are you defending these guys? No. What I am doing is presenting my perspective. And it doesn't mean that I have the final verdict. It doesn't mean that I'm 100% right. You know, we all like to sit up in the society and we all like to judge people. And, uh, you know, I always sit up and say, you know, Wait until more information comes to light, and even at that, if it's just not enough, you know, unless it's directly affecting us and the people that we love, the people that we support, unless it affects us directly like that, then really, who are we to judge? You know, we all have to answer to somebody when we get ready to leave this earth, and whoever it is that we do answer to, if there is any type of wrongdoing that has been committed by these two men, they will have to answer to that higher authority. And until that moment comes, the best thing that we can sit up and do, if it bothers us to no end, is to just pay these two guys no mind. Life goes on. That's the bottom line. I hope you appreciated that food for thought. As always, we like to keep it real over here. All right, so we're going to take a very brief commercial break. We come right back. I want to give you guys some programming notes, let you guys know what we got planned for the rest of January as we got another special guest that's going to be stopping on by very shortly. We'll give you the details on that. Other quick programming notes. You're listening to the RCWR Show on Tuesday night, January 22nd, 2013, folks. We will be coming right back. Live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., this is the RCWR Show with your host, Lee Sanders. All right, and we're back. Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael, Lee Sanders with you all. All right, so some quick programming notes because we're going to have a pretty busy week over here. You know what time it is, guys. So this Thursday night, of course, at 10 p.m. Eastern right here on blogtalkradio.com. It's the return of Impact Showdown Radio. We'll be covering the fallout from TNA Impact Wrestling Live, where it was revealed that Taz is one of the members of Aces and Aids. But the real question right now is just how far up the ranks is he? Is he possibly VP? We continue to get comments from you guys on YouTube as you all offer your opinions. We'll go another round and share you all's reactions to this latest development. But again, we'll be covering that and the very latest in TNA wrestling-related news. Then this Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, it's the return of the RCWR show Call That Match Special. I will be rolling up my sleeves and put on my thinking cap to try to offer match predictions and potential storylines you could expect to come out of the Royal Rumble pay-per-view 
setting up weeks worth of episodes of WWE programming going into their last pay-per-view before WrestleMania, the Elimination Chamber. And for the very first time on our Call That Match series, we will be opening up the phone lines. I want to get you guys' reactions. I want to know what your predictions are for the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. We know from time to time when we've done our Call That Match special, some of you have wanted to call in and offer your predictions. You will now be able to do so on this monumental episode. Hey, we had to do it, whereas after all, it is the Royal Rumble. So you all are encouraged to call into the show this Saturday. It all leads into the RCWR post show this Sunday, covering the fallout from the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. I'll give you my overall takeaway, analysis of the event. We will also be opening up the phone lines on that respected episode as well. And, folks, one final time for this month, and we're ending January on a high note, we will make one last Monday night appearance. Okay, the night after the Royal Rumble, immediately after WWE Raw, make sure you join us at 11 p.m. or immediately after Raw goes off the air. That's how we'll kind of do it, just to be on the safe side for you guys. But you can tune in at 11 if you want. If Raw is still on, we'll have some nice, cool music playing for you guys as you all are watching Raw, waiting for it to go off, waiting to hear us come on to the air. Check that out. And uh, we said we had another special guest that's going to be coming by. And uh, it's so funny because I was kicking back the other day, and I was just minding my own business. I was doing some uh, graphic design work, testing out some stuff for the website. And of all people, the famous Justin Reno, he had hit me up with a message. He said, hey, man, I got some stuff I want to lay down on your listeners Let's do a show together. I said, okay, okay, well, when are you free? Folks, mark it down on your calendar, the one and only, the famous Justin Reno. is going to be stopping by Impact Showdown Radio January 31st at 10 p.m. Eastern. He's got something big. I don't know what it is, but he's got something big he wants to lay down for you guys. So we're going to give him all the time in the world to do it. And, of course, it's always a joy when we have Justin Reno stop by the show. Our first guest, he was on our 100th episode. He is family over here. So make sure you show him some love and make sure you check that episode out on the 31st. Also, for our YouTube subscribers, we have not forgotten about you guys. We're going to do a very special episode that's going to be dedicated to you guys as we have a couple of people that want to wish us some very kind words, and you'll actually be able to see who these people are. It's going to be in a YouTube exclusive piece that will be available to you all next Monday night as we celebrate getting 1 million views on YouTube as the number of subscribers continue to come in on a daily basis. All right, well, the talk of wrestling, it may end here for now. But as always, check us out at InfinityOneProductions.com for the very latest in wrestling-related news and so much more. And hey, take this time out. Be kind and rewind. Check out previous episodes of the RCWR Show Impact Showdown Radio episodes that you may have missed from weeks earlier. We've been putting out some really great, fantastic shows all this month that has been meeting A lot of great reviews that's been meeting a lot of great listens, great downloads. If you like what you heard tonight, make sure you backtrack. Check out all those previous episodes that we've been putting out all this month. You can look us up in the iTunes, Zoom marketplaces. Just use the keywords, the RCWR Show. Episodes also available for all your respected iDevices, Android, portable devices, you name it. Through Stitcher. Grab that Stitcher app. It is free in the App Store. That's going to do it, guys. Till we hear from you all this Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern for Impact Showdown Radio. Black Avenger, a.k.a. the Black Azrael Lee Sanders, wishing you all to be safe and be kind to one another, folks. 